Hi everyone, I'm Sov, these are my notes and let's get into it. PrEP is the name given to a medication regime that people at risk of catching HIV can take to prevent them from doing so. It stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis, where prophylaxis just means a treatment and pre-exposure means you take it before you're exposed to the thing that you're going to treat, in this case HIV. So drugs that fall under the PrEP umbrella are preventative, in other words they stop HIV from multiplying and spreading through your body and so stop it from infecting you successfully. The whole point of PrEP is to stop HIV going viral. Now I actually know a few people that are either on PrEP or think you're going on to PrEP and I've heard about it and seen about it a lot when I've learned about HIV and AIDS so I wanted to know how it actually works but to understand PrEP we must first understand HIV. HIV is a virus, the human immunodeficiency virus to give it its full name, and it can get into your body via a myriad of bodily fluids, semen, vaginal fluids and blood being main examples. Common ways that this happens is by sex or sharing needles, but it can also be spread from mother to child during a pregnancy or birth or breastfeeding. Now viruses have one aim and that is to replicate, to make as many copies of themselves as possible, but they can't do it on their own they need a host to do it. What do viruses in James Corden's chat shows have in common? Unfortunately, they both need hosts. HIV's host of choice are the cells of your body, primarily the cells of your immune system. There are a few different cells actually that they can infect, but the main one that gets discussed are CD4 plus T cells. Science cell, CD4 plus also called CD4 positive cells. These cells are found in your blood and are also known as helper T cells. They protect you from infections by detecting when there's something in your body that shouldn't be there, that needs to be got rid of. Now HIV enters these helper T cells, hijacks them and turns them into little HIV making machines. The HIV that gets made in these cells then spreads to other cells and therefore the cycle repeats. The T cells end up dying by a few different routes and this death spreads through your body as the virus spreads through your body. That's why if you watch programs or films that discuss HIV or if you know someone who's infected yourself, then you may have heard of CD4 counts being talked about. These measure the amount of these helper T cells that you have left in a certain amount of your blood and they're a way to kind of detect the progression of the virus. According to HIV.gov, a healthy CD4 cell count can range from between 500 to 1600 of these cells in a thousandth of a millimeter of blood so it's a tiny tiny little drop if someone's cell count falls below 200 in that same volume then they'll get a diagnosis of AIDS low CD4 counts means they'll be more susceptible to getting ill from other infections and when they do get infections they'll find it harder to fight them off that's where the immunodeficiency in AIDS comes in your immune system is deficient it's not working properly so in order to prevent HIV infections from developing to this level Level, we need to stop it from multiplying and spreading through the body. Fortunately, we know the life cycle of an HIV virus and so this provides us with a few different targets to find medicines for. We can stop HIV from even entering the cells in the first place and drugs that do this are called entry inhibitors or fusion drugs. We can stop the HIV from hijacking the host cell like using drugs called NRTIs or integrase inhibitors or we can stop HIV from leaving its host cell, minimizing the spread of the virus around the body. And these drugs are called PIs or protease inhibitors. The current drugs for PrEP are in the second category. They're NRTIs that stop the HIV from hijacking. So how do they do that? As humans, our genetic information is in our DNA and it's in every single one of your cells and it tells your cells how to make all the stuff that will keep them working properly, like an instruction manual. HIV also has genetic information, but importantly, it's not in the form of DNA, it's as RNA. Part of the hijacking process is that the HIV needs to get its genetic information merged with the host DNA so that the human cell will make copies of the virus. It basically adds a chapter on making HIV to the human instruction manual. But DNA and RNA are different, not least the RNA only has one strand. So you can't have the virus building chapter in a language the human cell can't read. So HIV gets to work making RNA look like DNA by creating a second strand for it. Using an enzyme it's packed inside itself 
myself called reverse transcript days. This reverse transcript days acts like a translation tool. It builds a second strand for the HIV's RNA so it looks like DNA. With the HIV's genetic info in the same form as the humans, they can now be merged using another enzyme called integrase. So now the virus building chapter gets read just like the rest of the how to make a human manual and voila, the human cell suddenly starts making copies of the virus as if that's what it was meant to do all along. PrEP stops this whole process in its tracks. Because as I said, the current drugs approved for PrEP are called NRTIs, and that stands for Nucleotide Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitors. Now seeing that, these last three words in particular should be particularly appealing, Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitor. These drugs inhibit, they stop the action of reverse transcriptase, that thing that builds the strand for the RNA and makes it look like DNA. And the nucleotide part tells us why that's the case. Because nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA and RNA. So as the reverse transcriptase is building up a second strand to make the RNA look like DNA, if there are NRTIs or these drugs hanging about, then they're gonna get incorporated into the strand. When they do, they terminate strand creation. They stop it from being made any longer. This means that the rest of the RNA doesn't get a second matching strand, and so it can't be integrated into the DNA. NRTIs stop the HIV's genetic chapter from being translated into human cell language. Can you tell I'm really proud that I came up with that metaphor? <laughs> and that's how they work. The eagle-eared amongst you also may have heard that the other type of drug that stops this hijacking phase are called integrase inhibitors, and that's because they stop the other enzyme that does the merging, uh, the integrase enzyme. I'm sure you already noticed that, but I just thought I'd point it out for you Easter egg hunters. I mean, it's not an Easter egg, it's literally just science, but. Trivada is the name of one branded drug that's often prescribed for PrEP, with the active ingredients of science words that I'm definitely gonna pronounce correctly, m and tenofovid dysproxyl fumarate. That's the one. Uh, although you can get generic versions of these that aren't branded. These are the NRTIs that I've talked about and they work as described. All you've got to do is take one tablet a day. Because PrEP is all about preventing HIV from multiplying and causing any damage on your body, it's important to take it before being infected. There are other drugs you can take after you've been infected with HIV. One big example being PEP, where the pre in pre-exposure prophylaxis turns into post because it means after, hence it's PEP and PrEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, but if you think that you know you know someone who's at risk of contracting HIV or if you think that PrEP could be useful for you yourself then it's always worth talking about treatment options with your doctor or at a sexual health clinic um, because you know they can offer better advice than I can I feel PrEP's been available in sexual health clinics in Scotland since 2017. Uh, England were a bit behind. We've only made it available this year in 2021. Saying that, that's freely available. Before then, it was available through like a pilot scheme. And then that pilot scheme was so popular that now it's fully available. In America, the FDA approved it in 2012, but obviously getting drugs in America is complicated and expensive. But wherever you are in the world, it's just worth checking out your options. There's also some evidence that taking PrEP on demand can work well. This is where you take PrEP surrounding kind of isolated incidents where you're particularly at risk of contracting HIV rather than taking it every day. But again, if you think that might work for you, talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. My surname's Ward. That's as close as I get. <laughs> Side effects, if you get any, are often small. Nausea and some headaches, and they go away after a couple of weeks. In some cases, taking PrEP can affect your kidney function, which is why when you're on it, you should be having regular blood tests. And studies have shown that all side effects, whatever they are, seem to stop when you stop taking PrEP. So there's no doubt that PrEP has been an absolute game changer for people who live at risk of contracting HIV. Especially for men who have sex with men, it's made simply living how you want to live a far less terrifying experience. Saying that, it's always good to have choice and there's research being done on different forms of PrEP, so ones that don't involve taking a tablet a day, like injections and implants and a, a vaginal ring that's actually apparently quite close to getting approved, which is cool. It's a bit like birth control, like there's loads of different options out there and the more options the better. I remember when I was straight that taking a pill every day was not that much to remember, but like the fear when you forgot of like, oh my gosh, I've forgotten to take my pill and now I'm gonna be pregnant is a lot. So it's always great to have options. <laughs> of course, saying that, pregnancy reminded me, there are certain things that PrEP can't protect against, STIs, pregnancy, 
So sometimes good old condoms are still great and other forms of birth control if you need them. And that is my rundown of prep. There it is. I hope it was useful. Like this video if you like it. Share it if you share it. Subscribe it if you subscribe it. Media my socials if you want to do that. And comment if you have any thoughts. Otherwise, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. And remember, be prepared. It's a little scar reference, that. A big, big, big cheers to my patrons for making this video possible and supporting me during my time away from YouTube with a special shout out to Angela, Drov, Brent, Terry and Justin. And welcome back, Robbie. It's good to see you again. Thanks, team. Hi, I'm So Snopes and welcome to prep school. All right, you know, obviously I'm dressed like a cowboy. Doctors can wear checked too, thank you. Ah, stop. Oh wait, did I have any other jokes I wanted to make? Prep, it's like Norton for your body. <laughs> Tune. This isn't one of the ultimate bangers. It's perfect as well because it's just the campy energy that we need. Scar's definitely a man who sleeps with men, isn't he? And that's the end of the video. You made it. Here's a playlist of my favourites. Here's a video I've specifically chosen for you. And here's a cheeky little Patreon link. Adios.